Hi, it's Lewis Vandenberg, KUCR. We're here with Christoph Kemper, uh, NAM 2018. And Mr. Kemper, I gotta say that your products are some of the, my favorite, so I'm a little bit biased in, 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 in interview you in, because I'm such a fan of what, of what you do. I love, Thank you. I love the Access Virus. And before we get into talking about the Kemper Profiler, uh, is the Access Virus uh, going to evolve? Is what's, what's going on with the uh, Access? Well, actually, there's uh, not too much development going into the virus uh, these days. but Because it's kind of perfect. Uh, yeah, it, in a way, it's kind of perfect. And we, uh, at the moment, I must admit, we put uh, most efforts of the company in our new product range for, for the guitar player, which is the profiler. Um, but I can, I can see in the, in the, not in the near future, but maybe a bit later, we will also put some more effort again into the keyboards. Well, this, this is, uh, you have made two of the most brilliant products, at least in my view, and they really promote creativity. What was the idea behind the Kemper Profiler? Well, it was, um, it was first of all, it was an, uh, I'm, I'm an engineer, like an electrical engineer, and I was, I was curious. I have always been curious uh, also about guitar amps. I always loved the sound when I, when I was a producer way back. So like, uh, I, I'm, I'm a keyboarder, actually. I'm not, I'm not a guitar player, but still I love the sound. And I, I was always curious about like how, how this sound is made and how it can be done in digital. And um, that's why someday I decided to uh, take the plunge uh, in, into the guitar amp uh, technique and see what would come out of that. And yeah, well, I, I can tell now, rest is history. <laughs> okay. uh, the, the, what, what your product does, can you explain your product, how it works? Uh, how it works is it's not it's not a let, let's say classic modeling amp where you get um, uh, amp models which is like algorithms and programs that model a certain amp. Uh, this is not what we present. Instead, we uh, offer you to I would say yeah record and, and make a carbon copy of if you want so of your own amp uh, and make it sound the same. Uh, in our unit, that is like digitizing your your uh, precious amplifier, and of course, uh, you have the chance to, to use and for example purchase uh, other amplifier models. We call it profiles uh, from from other vendors. Uh, and the nice thing about that is that it's not us making it in our in our company or factory and telling you. Uh, that this is the like the real deal and real thing and this sounds like that amp but you make your own copy of your amp and you check if that amp comes out the same way as the original and uh, if it comes out then you press store and you're done and this is how every profile every preset that we have uh, is made so it's like um, you can you, you can be very confident that the sound is the sound that you hear is how an amp has sounded at someone's home or someone's studio. For, for non-musicians, I think it's important to explain that a guitar has a certain sound, a certain character, as well as the amp. And, and guitarists like to match guitars with amps to create different kinds of sounds. The genius, the brilliance of, your, uh, of the Kemper Profiler is that you really are able to uh, to take the character and sound of uh, any amplifier and and bring that to your instrument, and so it gives you such an enormous palette of sounds with which right. with which to create, and that is uh, such a gift, I think, to to musicians and such a a wonderful concept and so well executed. And it's also spawned a kind of a sub-industry. There are people creating uh, amp profiles and giving people, uh, musicians, access to rare amplifiers that they would never have access to through the Kemper Profiler. Does it, are you flattered by this? Or do you view this as a, a, a competition that you could be selling these, uh, these profiles or does it, is it something you think contributes 
to the culture around your device? Well, it's the latter. Um, it's not. It's not a competition uh, to us. It is. Uh, it is actually something that we have anticipated from the beginning. Uh, I took the decision very early for our company not to create content, and instead letting uh, well the world make the content because we have learned in early days when we did the Access Virus or when we developed the Access Virus. Similar. It's, yeah, it is a similar uh, paradigm in a way. What we've learned is that, or what I've learned in way back in, in the 90s, uh, that if, we, um, if people come up to us with content, it is much better than what we could do. You could compare it to a record company. Uh, a record company does not employ composers. They, I think they did in the 50s, but they soon learned that um, it's not a good idea. It's a better idea to wait for great composers show up to you, and um, they, they're always better than what you, what you can do. And this is what this is what we did. So we, in a way, we waited for people to come, and um, it it was like in a way a free market of content that happened. Um, and that was created by that, and uh, everybody now now knows who's who's the who uh, delivers the best quality uh, and stuff. And it's impossible for us to beat him. It's like, you know, it's like a good composer. How how can how can I be that person? Right. <laughs> so earlier in this conversation, I, I we we had kind of agreed that the the virus, your your synthesizer, is a very mature and some would say a perfect instrument. And uh, you have a device here, the, the Kemper Profiler, that is also very mature. And a year ago, I could not imagine how it could be better. I just thought it was a perfect creation. But you actually are making it better. You're bringing in uh, um, uh, effects into it that are really very impressive. Yeah, it's... Um well, you, you could tell that the, um, let's say, the, the, the profiling, which is the modeling, uh, I, I'd say it's, it's close to perfect. So at least um, there's, there's, no, there's, there's about no room to improve it. Um, but there, there's a lot to do for us. So we will uh, do what we've also done in the past. We will um, create new effects uh, for, uh, for the profiler, for our product. They're quite beautiful, really excellent work. Yeah, that that there can be more. There can be more of it, you know. And this is this is what we've done in the past, and we'll do it in the future. Uh, our users ask us for more effects because they have a the clear tendency to try to have the whole rig in, in into one unit, which is which is a true uh, in in general an innovation of digital guitar amplifiers that you can bring. Uh, the, the whole effect chain into one unit, which is uh, which, which has uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, advantages. It's not it's not so expensive. Uh, it's more flexible because you can uh, s uh, store and recall a whole setting, and it's also a better sound quality because you don't have that many transition and joints for audio signals in the in the analog domain, which is which is a major point. It's also a great thing that you can uh, invest in this in the, the profiler, and then you're almost given the these gifts uh, in the in the OS uh, updates oh, yeah. to in, to make it to make it even better. Yeah, that's that's true, and I can I can tell the story to that. Uh, we we started this um, giving you um, know innovations and improvements for free. We started this uh, way back in, I think it was 1997 or 1998, uh, with the Axis virus. I'm well aware. Yeah, when we, and probably we were absolute industry first doing that. Uh, at least we were 10 years ahead of Apple, <laughs> uh, giving away firmware with not just bug fixes, but real improvements through the internet for free. And we still continue that. And we know others doing that as well. I remember reading an interview with you, and you said that uh, the profiler became uh, something that came out of when you started thinking about the nature of distortion. And uh, I've had wonderful, many 
hundred, probably hundreds of hours playing through your instruments and throwing through the profiler. But one thing I've never tried is trying to achieve kind of a Jimi Hendrix distortion through some of the, your Marshall uh, profiles. Is it, does it work? Has, has, have people using these devices to make distortion? Oh yeah, I mean the question is what is the Jimi Hendrix distortion? Are we talking about the uh, the octave, uh, how, how do you call this, uh, octave distortion? It is possible. Uh, we have the effect, it's it's called, rec well, it we should have called it rectifier because it, it's electrically a rectifier, but guitarists think when they see rectifier, they think about a guitar amp, a Mesa Boogie guitar amp. So we, we call it RectiShaper, but it rectifies the signal. It, it puts the negative half of the signal and flaps it over to the positive. And this is what is in, in, in this octave effect that, that uh, Jimi Hendrix uses. Just choose that effect and you might sound like Jimi Hendrix, if you play right. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so the, the, the device, the profiler, reacts with the guitar acoustically in the same way that, that the amplifier would in the room. Is that, is that, how, is that working as well? It is. Well, in the room, it is possible if you use a, a guitar speaker. Ah. Yes, then it's possible, right? Many many people approach us or um, talk about that. It, it won't sound, the profiler would not sound like their amp in the room, which it can't. It can't, like through, through a recording or through like monitor speakers, sure. it can't sound the same as a four by 12 in the rehearsal room. Sure. So. Uh, the cure for that is use a 4x12. Thanks for the tip. I got to say, I'm uh, really happy to be speaking with you, Christoph Kemper, one of the true greats, I think, in the uh, music industry ever. And thank you very much for doing what you do. I really, really appreciate it.